Expediency of operating seed of Igbo must go and sowing seeds of harmony and progress by As Isaac Asabo. At the moment, the social media landscape has been ablaze with a controversial hashtag, hashtag Igbo must go. This provocative call to action has sparked heated debate, raised tensions and highlighted underlying ethnic divisions in Lagos and the southwest region of Nigeria. This provocative call to action has sparked heated debate, raised tensions and highlighted underlying ethnic divisions in Lagos and the southwest region of Nigeria. But what exactly is behind this hashtag and how has it impacted the social fabric of a vibrant city? On July 27, 2024, a post by the handle at Lagospedia on X, formerly known as Twitter, went viral. The post urged Lagosians to brace themselves for a massive Igbo must go protest scheduled for August 20th to 30th, 2024. The inflammatory message struck a chord, generating reactions across social media platforms and drawing attention to the simmering tensions between ethnic groups. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sangwolu wasted no time in condemning the divisive rhetoric. In a statement issued by his media aide, Boyega Akosile, Sangwolu distanced himself from the reckless call for Igbos to leave Lagos. He emphasized that Lagos remains a home for all ethnic citizens, regardless of their ethnic backgrounds. Against the foregoing divisive backdrop, it is expedient to opinion that as we navigate these turbulent times, it is essential to recognize the power of communication. Hashtags, tweets, and social media posts can shape public opinion, influence policy, and even exacerbate existing tensions. Therefore, responsible communication is crucial for maintaining peace and unity within our diverse society. Given the evil that characterizes tribalism, it is not surprising that former Vice President Atiku Abubakar recently invoked the tragic history of Rwanda, urging Nigerians to learn from it. In Rwanda, divisive language and propaganda for the devastative genocide of 1994. As responsible citizens, we must, desist, we must, we must resist any attempt to sow discord among ourselves. Rather, we should resort to promoting dialogue, understanding and empathy. Against the foregoing backdrop, it is not a misnomer in this context to ping that the Igbo must go hashtag serves as a stark reminder of the delicate balance we must strike in our interconnected world. Let us choose unity over division, empathy over hostility, and responsible communication over reflex rhetoric. Lagos, with its rich cultural tapestry, deserves nothing less. In fact, we should always remember that our strength lies in our diversity and together we can build a more harmonious and prosperous future for all. Future for all. Dr. Emeka Kahlo, a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party, but has called on Mr. Babajide Sangwolu and Sheyi Makande, the governor of Lagos and Oyo State respectively, to arrest and prosecute those threatening the continued residing of Igbo extraction in the two states. Given the danger which the hashtag conveys to the public, particularly the Igbos and virtually all the Yorubas in the southwest region of Nigeria, as anyone that neither speak nor understand Yoruba, it must contribute to be an Igbo. And conversely, the Yorubas living peacefully in the southeast region and even the south south region of Nigeria are put at risk as any attempt to hurt the Igbos and the Southwest could unarguably incur retaliatory responses in other re regions. In fact, P2B, the 2023 Labour Party, LP flag bearer in the, pres in the 2023 presidential election, has kicked against the call that Igbo should relocate from Lagos State. In the same vein, Dr. Emeka Kalu, a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party, PDP has called on Mr. Babajide Sangwolu and Sheyi Makende, the governors of Lagos and Oyo State, respectively, to arrest and prosecute those threatening Nigerians of Igbo extractions living in the two states. At this juncture, it is expedient to recall that a campaign tagged Igbo Must Go protest, which started in the social media sometime last month, had given the Igbos residing in the two states till August 20 to leave the southwest. 
but seven Nigerians of diverse origin had condemned the campaign. While Sam Wolo has already, has already castigated the campaigners as earlier mentioned in this context, Carlo, in a statement he personally signed and made available to journalists in Lagos, described the campaign as a stigmatization against the Igbos. The politician insisted that such unguarded utterances, among other things, negated the bond of unity that holds the country together as people of one nation. He explained that it was the responsibility of a government to go after those behind such unguarded statement. He lamented that the country was presently facing hunger as a result of a dwindling economy, which sparked the ongoing nationwide protest and wondered why a segment of the people were still finding embers of hatred. He said, and I quote, I condemn in strong voice the call by some sentiment-driven youth in the Southwest for people of Igbo descent residents in Lagos and Ayose to leave the region. In the interest of fairness, the government is expected to swing into action by ensuring that the perpetrators are arrested and brought to book. Outside this action, outside this action, it would amount to deceit on the side of a government for allowing some group of persons to stalk the crisis and the policy. He emphasized that a nation in defense of a common brotherhood was not expected to take lightly such divisive utterances capable of flaming up another dimension of uprising and crisis in the country. He declared that the state of economic distress in the country was never caused by evil residents in Lagos that would warrant their eviction. Rather, he stated that their business investment had continued to impact the Lagos state economy alongside the entire federation. He advised the federal government to prevail on the security agencies to unveil those who orchestrated the hate speech and divisiveness. In a similar vein, the Pan-Yoruba Social Cultural and Social Political Organization, Afer Nefer, has called on all Nigerians living legitimately in any part of Yoruba land to entertain no fear about their safety or be afraid of being forced out of the area. At this juncture, it is germane to opinion that tribalism, like a stubborn weed, has taken root in the fatal soul of Nigerian social fabric. It thrives on division, perpetuating stereotypes and hindering progress. It is high time we collectively recognize its harmful effect and work towards a more united nation. In fact, tribalism in its essence is the preference for one's own ethnic group over others. It manifests in various ways. This is as people who have bought biases against those from different tribes, often based on historical events or cultural differences. In a similar vein, tribal loyalty leads to preferential treatment within communities affecting employment, education, and social and social interaction. And in some cases, intertribal marriages are discouraged, perpetuating separation and limiting understanding between groups. Yes, so it is not this is not even the right time for this at all it is certainly not the right time for it all right on this note we have come to the end of the news we say thank you for turning in to listen and so i come here next time enjoy <laughs>